El Pollo Loco. Friday, your chance to see new kids on the block live at Yamaba. Watch at 8 a.m. for the code word Friday on the KTLA 5 Morning News. Now at 11, one day before the latest installment of the Fast and Furious is released in theaters, the CHP is out with a warning about real-life street racing. And the Dodgers are being criticized for pulling a group of queer and trans nuns from their list of honorees for the team's Pride Night. And from high tides to rip currents, the beach hazard statements that are now in effect. Plus, Kai Goldberg is here on this Thursday. Hi, Kai. Hello, Lou. Hello, Corrine. Yeah, we're talking about a coastal flood advisory. That could get a little tricky as we make our way into this evening. We'll talk about that, get into some thunderstorms, and a beautiful weekend forecast coming up next. Winter in today for Glenn Walker. The CHP has launched a campaign. They're cracking down on illegal street racing. Yeah, they're also concerned that the release of the new Fast and Furious film this weekend could further drive up this dangerous trend. Alina Bovian is live in Beverly Grove with more details. Hi, Alina. Hi, ladies. Good morning. You know, it's pretty difficult to go head to head with the marketing of the movie for the latest Fast and the Furious, but the CHP, along with several other agencies, they really are putting a big push to get this message out there. Just take a look behind me. You can see this big sign hanging right here over Melrose Avenue. It says street racing and sideshows, thrills that kill. And that was the general message from today's press conference. Now, you also see this blue Lamborghini here. It is completely wrecked, and it's just another way of showing the public the dangers behind street racing and street takeovers. According to the CHP, the number of street shows has quadrupled since 2015. They are dangerous, they are deadly, and one of the most powerful speakers during this press conference, a mother of a 16-year-old victim, she put it all into perspective. I read the report over and over and over, thinking what did I do wrong as a mom? Oh, what did she do wrong as a teenager, 16 years old? She died in the middle of the night in a cold asphalt without me being there for her when she took her last breath. Lily Trujillo Puckett is the founder of Street Racing Kills. Her 16-year-old daughter was a passenger when she died during a street race several years ago. Law enforcement here in L.A. responds to a street takeover several times a week, sometimes multiple times in one night over the weekend. But trying to break one up is extremely difficult. So the purpose of today's presser is to educate the public and hopefully get ahead of the problem. California Assemblymember Vince Fong also speaking today. He says he helped secure $5.5 million to fund this campaign and also to give law enforcement the tools to tackle this growing problem in a meaningful way. Moving forward, there will be a multi-agency task force, including LAPD and the Sheriff's Department. Chief Michael Moore saying today the timing of this campaign is critical, especially with the release of Fast X, the latest Fast and the Furious movie, which feeds into the culture of street racing and street takeovers. The popularity of movies such as the Fast and Furious series and their upcoming latest release, we believe is likely to influence copycats because of the movies glamorizing this very dangerous activity. Movies like this are fantasies. People may not believe this, but people look and watch these movies and they somehow believe that they can go out and copycat and do these activities and that they'll be safe. Now, we also heard from L.A. County Sheriff Robert Luna about the legal consequences if you are involved in a street race or even if you're just standing on the street watching. And we'll talk more about that coming up at noon. I'm Lena Bovin reporting live here in Beverly Grove. We'll send it back to you. Alina, thank you. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's security chief is speaking out about their tense encounter with the paparazzi on Tuesday night. The couple claims they were involved in a, quote, near catastrophic car chase after an event in New York City. Their security chief says they were, quote, shaken up after the incident and that Meghan's mother was particularly affected. However, law enforcement sources have played down the severity of that incident. New York police say while paparazzi made the transport challenging, there were no collisions, injuries, or arrest.
And closer to home, there's growing concern over a homeless encampment. It's right near a school in Hollywood. Parents and commu community members say that it's putting students' safety at risk. Our Erin Myers is live. She has the details and also the calls for action. Hi, Erin. Hi, Kareen. The LAPD tells me that they are aware of the issues with this encampment and that they routinely respond to this area. In fact, officers are out here right now, some of them actually handing out vouchers for food to those staying at the encampment. And you can see it here behind me. It is blocking the sidewalk, and that is really the big concern for parents. The campus houses Selma Avenue Elementary School and Larchmont Charter School. The encampment is also near Selma Park, where there is a newly reopened YMCA. Parents tell us the encampment blocks the sidewalk in front of the school, so children are having to walk in the street and through the cars that are waiting to drop off and pick up students. School officials tell me they have seen the encampment grow and they are worried about a student being hurt or killed because they are dodging traffic. They also tell me they have special needs students who need a safe path to get to school. School officials tell us they have had to call police multiple times because of the encampment. In fact, earlier this week there was a dispute between a few people at the encampment. We are told an arrest was made. Currently, homeless encampments are banned within 500 feet of schools and daycare centers, but enforcement has been difficult. Now back here live, Council Member Hugo Soto Martinez's office is aware of the issues here at this encampment. They tell me that they are working with the LAPD and other organizations to try to figure out a solution. Reporting live here in Hollywood, I'm Erin Myers. I'll send it back to you both in the studio. All right, Erin, thank you. Well, the Dodgers have rescinded the invitation for one of their Pride Night honorees amid pressure from various Catholic groups. And now the Dodgers could be losing one of their major partners for the LGBTQ celebration. KTLA 5's Carlos Sosedo is live outside Dodger Stadium with more details on this story. Hi, Carlos. Blue, good morning. You know, it's a night meant to celebrate diversity, inclusion, acceptance, but it has since turned to controversy now that the Dodgers organization uninvited an LGBTQ plus group, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And now the backlash has intensified here with the LA LGBT Center weighing in. Take a look here. The center announcing this morning they are removing themselves from Dodgers Pride Night, asking the team to cancel their annual LGBT themed event next month, unless it reconsiders its decision to uninvite the LA Sisters of perpetual indulgence. The boys in blue were set to honor the sisters with its Community Hero Award on June 16th. The group describes themselves as queer and trans nuns, and they've been around since 1979 doing community service, ministry work, and promoting human rights. But various religious groups have objected, including the Archdiocese of L.A. and the Catholic League, whose president said the Dodgers were honoring an anti-Catholic group.